Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and today I'm excited to say that we now know all the details surrounding the two new operators coming to Rainbow Six Siege and Operation Wind Bastion, and they look ridiculously powerful. First and foremost, on the defensive side, we have Kaid, who is essentially Bandit 2.0. He's bigger and better. The way that his gadget works is he has access to three Electro Claws, where he can toss them around the map, and anything that's around the radius, you guys will see an example of it, uh, it will be electrified. This means that if you want to, you're going to be able to electrify two different reinforcements that are directly next to each other with a single gadget. No longer are you going to have to use two of Bandit's batteries to achieve that. Also, if the map allows for it, you're going to be able to electrify barbed wire in a doorway and the reinforcement directly next to it. And if all of that wasn't enough, this is also the very first operator that's going to be able to electrify hatches from below. And so all in all, Kaid is going to give defense a ridiculous amount of utility and ways to stop offense from getting through these reinforcements. Now you might be thinking, okay, yeah, I can see why you said that he is going to be a bigger and better bandit. Why in the world would you ever want to play as Bandit anymore? He's able to essentially reinforce or electrify six walls, and Bandit, of course, can only electrify four at any given time. This just seems like power creep, and I would agree with you to some extent. Well, one reason why you might want to still play as Bandit is that he is a three-speed operator, and Kaid is a three-armored operator. They're going to have a completely different play style. And so if you still want to deny access for the offensive team to get through these walls, but you also want to still have that roaming potential, you're going to want to play as bandits. On top of that, Ubisoft clarified that Kaid's gadget takes a couple of seconds for it to activate. And so if you're trying to deny access after they took out your initial gadgets with a Thatcher, for example, you're trying to perform the bandit trick as Kaid, it's not going to be nearly as viable. Yes, if you see Habana charges going off, you're going to be able to shock those. But if there is a Thermite trying to get through a wall, you're going to still be way better off using bandits batteries to be able to deny that access. And so what it seems like they're going for is that he's not necessarily going to be a replacement to Bandit, even though I'm not 100% sold on that just yet, because it looks like he just does his job better, uh, but he's going to be more of a substitute. And so if you're someone who always likes the idea of what Bandit provides for the defensive team, but you're not someone who likes to roam around the map, then Kaid might be the operator of choice for you. But if you're someone who does like to roam around, then Bandit is still going to be your man. Now, what makes matters even more interesting is that Kaid is going to be the very first operator in the game that is able to use a slug shoddy that also has access to an ACOG scope. So they gave a couple examples during this short little trailer here where if you line up a headshot at long range, uh, it's a one shot. Now we don't know how much damage this is going to do for body shots and stuff to that nature, but imagine that because it is slug rounds that it's going to do a significant amount of damage. I'd be pretty surprised if it doesn't one shot up close like every other shoddy in the game. Now one downside of this of course is that it is going to have a slow RPM and so if you do miss that initial shot, you're leaving yourself open for the offensive team to be able to take you out. For those skillful players out there though, I imagine this is going to be a very satisfying weapon. Of course it's going to do well up close because of the very nature of the weapon, and anything at a distance, as long as you're accurate and you're going for those headshots, you're also going to be able to take those players out, and so just in general, this could be a very fun weapon to use. If all that wasn't enough though, he's also going to have access to a secondary weapon that is going to be able to use an ACOG scope. Now I'm sure some of you are shaking your head right now and thinking that this is blatant power creep and once again, I agree with you. I thought we were done with ACOGs on secondary weapons when they removed it on the SMG-11 for smoke way back in the day. Why are they reintroducing it? Well, we have to remember that Kaid is a three-armored operator, and so I guess it kind of makes sense that he'd have access to ACOG scopes, and so why not for his secondary? But this also means that if you wanted to, you could have your primary running with just a normal sight, and then switching over to your secondary for those longer range shots, and so it is going to give him more of that versatility. All in all, though, I cannot wait to see how this guy performs in reality. It seems like he's going to be ridiculously powerful. I do have my concerns that he's just going to be a better bandit, but because he is a three armor, it does seem like he's going to have a different role. But in general, it does look like he is going to be a powerful new addition for the defensive team. Moving on over to the offensive side, we have Nomad. Now, we already knew that she had access to a gadget that allowed her to push the defensive team around, but I wasn't expecting it to be this ridiculous. 
but also this strong. So the way that her gadget works is that she has access to three of them and she can throw them around the map and anyone that gets near its proximity is going to be pushed away. Now it doesn't cause any disorientation effect like a Zofia charge or an Echo for example, so you don't have that to worry about, but it does knock you to the ground and when you go through the animation to get on up back up on your feet, you're not able to shoot your weapon. And so any offensive player that knows when this goes off, they can round the corner really quickly and take you out while you are in this vulnerable state. On top of that, to make it even more interesting and kind of ridiculous is that any defender that activates this gadget and if they get pushed against a soft wall, they're gonna go through the soft wall, which just looks hilarious. And so this gadget is gonna have a lot of different applications. You want it to watch your back and be a proximity mine or a deterrent for roamers? It's gonna be perfect for that job. It's the very first offensive trap operator. You and her team are pushing from one direction. You don't wanna designate someone to watch your back the entire time. You want everyone focused on pushing the objective and watching from one direction. You can just have this gadget watch your back. If you know that defense is hunkered down on the objective, they're anchoring hard, uh, you can just push them around and get them out into the open. They're behind a mirror, push them out behind the mirror or stun them so that you can charge on in and take her out while she's going through the animation of getting back up on her feet. If you know someone's behind a half wall or deployable shield, you don't need to worry about it anymore. Just shoot this near, near their proximity. It's gonna go off and they're gonna be flung out into the open. This is gonna have a lot of different applications. Now the downside of her, of course, is that if you do have her gadget out and you're trying to push someone out from behind cover, uh, you don't have your primary weapon out, they do, if they're looking at you, they're gonna be able to take you out. This is one of the biggest weaknesses and drawbacks of Capital, even though he does have a lot of utility, but that utility does come with some pretty big drawbacks, which I have a feeling is gonna be the same for Nomad. On top of that, she's also heavily countered by Jaeger. Jaeger's not going anywhere. He has one of the highest pick rates on defense, so that is another thing that you're gonna to have to work around. In general, though, I cannot wait to see how this operator works in action. I have a feeling that she's gonna be a pretty big game changer on some maps and on some objectives. Only time will tell, of course, but I can't wait to see how people use her gadget and all the different uses and all the different ways that people are going to be able to take advantage of it. And then finally, we got a really good look of the new map fortress. Ubisoft really emphasized during this presentation that their focus on the map was to give offense a lot of opportunities to get onto the roof with a lot of different staircases, but also there's going to be a lot of different ways for you to use that roof access to get into the building and to the, all the different objectives. There's going to be a little drop off point where you can just drop down into the building itself. There's going to be a lot of different staircases that you're going to have access to that they even say that the defensive team won't even be able to use. And so while of course there will still be windows, there will still be different doorways on the bottom that you can move on into the different objectives, uh, this is going to be a very key focus of the map that people are really going to have to take advantage of. They also mentioned that this is going to be one of the largest maps ever introduced in Rainbow Six Siege. Now this makes sense to me, especially especially considering their map philosophy. If we take a look at Villa that encompasses that new design, uh, it's quite large. And the reason why it's quite large is that they want to ensure that offense isn't able to jump through a window and then immediately start to plant the objective. You need to establish a foothold in the actual building and then move on into the objective room. And so if they're taking that same design philosophy, it makes sense that this map is quite large because Villa is quite large. They did say that there isn't going to be a basement so we're not going to have to worry about that. But considering that this is one of the largest maps in the game and there isn't a basement, if Villa does have a basement and it's already that big, this thing must be gigantic for those two floors. One thing that is worth noting and is very reassuring about the map is that apparently they were able to get a lot of pro feedback on the map design. Ubisoft usually likes to get pros involved to see if the objectives are well balanced, if the map has a good flow to it, but apparently they had more sessions with pros on this map than ever before. Now this of course doesn't mean that Fortress is going to be the most balanced or best map ever introduced into Rainbow Six Siege, but it is reassuring knowing that the pros were able to give their feedback. Now, one thing that was a little disappointing about this presentation, though, is that there was no mention about changing or updating old operators. One thing I always loved about the mid-season reinforcements from the past, which no longer are a thing, is that they would go on in, rework old operators to either make them more viable or to put them in line because they were overpowered. 
what happened to that? Are we no longer getting those operator reworks? Are we never going to see a rework of Tachanka or some of these characters that are too strong or too weak? Is that no longer a thing? Now, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions because apparently there is going to be a big patch on the technical test servers and maybe they're going to include that there and it wasn't in their presentation, but I really hope that this isn't a thing of the past because this is something I always enjoyed about Siege and was hoping they would continue with it. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought about all these details. Are you excited about the two new operators? How do you think they're going to impact the game? Let me know down below. Uh, but yeah, guys, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.